What's cracking, y'all? It's your man's Nicholas. Welcome back to the HQ. Big dogs gotta eat. BDGE, fantasy football. We are gonna get into a mock draft today. I wanna try to get these out every Saturday, if not every other Saturday. Don't really wanna put them midweek and take up a valuable piece of content space because mock drafts aren't too valuable right now. They will be, of course, in the summertime, but I want to give you guys an idea of players' ADPs right now, and uh, if we keep doing this consistently, we'll kind of see the rise and falls of a lot of different players' ADPs. So I think it will be helpful. Uh, the other thing I will say is a lot of y'all always like say stuff about the team that I draft, and I don't pay attention necessarily to the team that I draft. I want you more so to pay attention to the analysis of the players like as I'm going through the draft, right? You don't get any value from the team that I draft, but you get value from the stuff that I talk about, you know, about the players throughout the mock draft. So try to pay attention to that. Stop talking shit in the goddamn comments about how my team turns out. It doesn't matter. These are mock drafts. These are just to help y'all. So if you do enjoy the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We do fantasy football videos every Tuesday, Friday. Every Monday, we're doing a one-on-one -on -one interview with an influencer in the fantasy football space. We got vlogs on Wednesday. We got Fade the Public on Thursday. A lot of good stuff going around here. So we're going to do today's mock draft on the Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. This is a free one that you can use at any time. Super customizable. So just go to Google, type in Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. And once you're on here, I don't think you have to make an account. But to make it more customizable, you might have to. It's a totally free account. So it's nothing uh, that you don't have to, you know, nothing you have to pay for or anything. But... The reason uh, the mock draft I'm going to do today is going to be a 10 team, half PPR, super flex. The reason being my E Town Get Down League, my big money league with my friends. If you watch any of the Fade the Public podcasts, that is Snacks and Animal. We have been in a league together for this will be the 11th anniversary of the E Town Get Down this upcoming year. So we play in a league together, pretty high stakes, and we did something over the Super Bowl, which we haven't done before, to select our draft order. What we did was create these prop city sheets and based on how well you did right it's all these different props that were going on during the super bowl whether it was like giselle popped up on the tv would donald trump text uh tweet out during the super bowl and then player stats and stuff like that so we did prop city and then depending on how well you did how many points you got from prop city that is the ranking in which you get to pick your draft order for our 2019 e-town get down draft now i will say one thing if you are in a fantasy league and you guys do some kind of competition to select your draft order y'all don't have the person who wins the competition automatically draft first make sure you get to pick where you want to draft if you win the competition so uh i ended up i think finishing eighth in prop city either seventh or seventh or eighth so i will have the eighth, seventh or eighth selection of my draft pick now you don't have we're not gonna actually pick the order of when we're drafting until about a week before the actual draft but I know that since I'm picking eighth, I will end up being towards a later round of the draft. Whoever gets to pick their draft picks always ends up going probably within like the top four picks or so. They always want one of those stud running backs. So I'm going to pretend as if I have the eighth pick in this draft. We're going to go half PPR. We will go snake. We will go 10, eighth. And then you could do your roster customization. So quarterback, running back, two wide receivers, tight end. We do two regular flexes and we do one super flex i would highly sex sexually recommend i would highly recommend y'all switch your leagues to super flex if you haven't already done so it's one of those things like standard to half pvr once you go there you never go back same thing with super flex it makes the quarterbacks way 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 more valuable um and it's just another position you have to prepare for because if you don't have two quarterbacks or a super flex league you don't have to prepare at all for a quarterback so if you are someone obviously if you're watching this video right now then you are someone who, who knows their shit when it comes to fantasy football. So that's that works to your advantage, having to just know one extra position. You know what I mean? So we're going to start this draft. And at this point, some of the ADPs and the rankings on these sites are a little, you know, freaked up. So I will be able to get probably value at some of the spots. But, you know, it is what it is what it is. And on the left side, you can see the draft log. So these are the players that are taken. In the middle, this is just like something they put in there to try to help you out to like you know what the experts would supposedly say um, on the bottom is all the players that are undrafted so I don't want to see my big ass head get in the way of anything 
so we'll keep it up here and on the right is my team that i've already picked already so first round eighth overall uh we see patrick mahomes as, as the number four pick we had Gurley, barkley zeke Patrick Mahomes. And I think that's going to be pretty similar to what we see going on this year in super flex leagues. Mahomes will likely be a top five pick. And in one quarterback leagues, guys, I still am saying I will not touch Mahomes before the fourth round. The positional value, yeah, is great. He had a, a fantastic year, actually the best quarterback year of all time for a fantasy quarterback, but he still was only like seven points per game better than the next quarterback. And that's like the difference between RB you know, seven and like RB 20. So it's like the value is still not there quarterback, no matter how good a year that quarterback has in fantasy, if you're playing in a one quarterback league, but in a super flex league, of course, having to own two quarterbacks, if not three, because you want backups for the buys and whatnot, and there's none available on the waiver wire, having a top guy like that is super, super, super duper valuable. However, I was looking today at the teams in my... So I, I played in five redraft leagues last year, and I looked at the championship teams in all five of them to see what their quarterback situation was. None of them owned Patrick Mahomes. Um, and for the most part, none of them owned top-level quarterbacks outside of Andrew Luck in two of them. So in two super flex leagues, Andrew Luck was owned, but Baker Mayfield was heavily owned as a championship quarterback. Um, one league had Josh Allen and Mitch Trubisky starting as their quarterback in the championship lineup. So I'm not too concerned about hopping up and grabbing a ton of quarterback depth, but I will in any super flex leagues, probably draft multiple or three quarterbacks, three decent options that you could stream week to week to week to week to week. So with the first round pick, we're looking at, uh, Gordon Chubb, Devonta Adams, Julio Jones. And those are probably the only four I would be considering at this point. And Melvin Gordon is the RB six on my board. And he is the RB6 here, so he will be my first choice. Don't love Melvin Gordon. If you missed my running back rankings video, my early top 10 fantasy running back rankings, you should go check that out on my channel. It's one of the more previous ones that I um, had posted. Melvin Gordon is a guy that I love. He competes with any of the top running backs in fantasy on a points per game basis. He's right up there with Gurley. He's right up there with Barkley. I don't know if that's going to stay the, stay the course next year, but... The only problem is he is uh, almost injury prone at this point. Three of the four seasons that he's played in the NFL, he is um, he has missed multiple weeks. And that is not something you want out of your first round pick. You want to kind of avoid risk there. Now, I won't say he's necessarily risky like an injury risk because it's not like he misses, you know, eight games or 12 games at a time. But that's the reason why you would probably draft him lower than these other running backs. So we had... Melvin Gordon, then we had a slew of quarterbacks. Luck, Rodgers, Connor, Wilson. Uh, it's too early for my likings for these quarterbacks right now, especially Russell Wilson. They don't even throw the ball in that fucking offense. Uh, he's someone that I won't really be looking at until the like fourth-ish round in Superflex Leagues. Super efficient, right? But you could just see the way that the offense is going. So we have our pick of Devontae Adams, Nick Chubb, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Tariq Hill. Now, D-Hop was my wide receiver one on my board, according to my wide receiver rankings video, which dropped yesterday. If you missed that, go check it out. Second round is going to be reserved for likely one of these wide receivers. Love Devonta Adams' consistency. Love Julio Jones' upside. Um, I like Nick Chubb, too, but Nick Chubb's actually going to be able to... Snacks is going to be able to keep Nick Chubb for like a 10th round pick this year which is shitty. George is going to be able to, Steen is going to be able to keep George Kittle for like an 11th round pick, which is also shitty. We're going to mess around because obviously I haven't done that many mock drafts this early in the year. Sometimes I will take Nick Chubb and see how the double running back works out. And I, I likely would, if this was my position, take Nick Chubb here because I'd like to have those two stud running backs. But we'll go with Devontae Adams. He was a pleasure to own in 2018. Go with Devontae Adams and then you see all these top wide receivers off the board. Now, I can already see how most of my drafts are going to go this year. Third round is probably exclusively exclusively going to be withheld for a premium tight end. There are three tight ends, Kelsey, Ertz, Kittle, and not in that order. I would probably order them Kelsey, Kittle, Ertz next year that are just far and above way better than the rest of them and I think you need that at tight end because it's it's a position that if you don't have someone there you could be hurting really really poorly yeah there are you know the Eric Ebrons where if you got lucky and got him off the free agent wire he 
he did work for you, but there's not going to be someone like that on a, you know, a yearly basis um, that you get lucky off the waiver wire and, and he kind of blows up to the point where Ebron blew up to. So in most of my drafts, what I'm probably going to be doing, what I'm seeing from early strategy is trying to get a stud running back in that first round, right? That's usually the case in point because those elite running backs, there's no bigger advantage in fantasy football than having uh, like an elite fantasy running back. So first round, you know, pick permitting, if if someone does fall to me at the eighth spot or whatever, then I will take that running back. And then, you know, a lot of the earlier mid rounds after that are going to be reserved for, um, for wide receivers that are value because there's so much value at the wide receiver position this late in the draft, this early in the draft, as well as a premium tight end. Ooh. So you can see Tyreek Hill is there, George Kittle. So for the most part, I would like to go with George Kittle here. Listen, he set the record for most receiving yards by a tight end this year, and he didn't have a fucking quarterback to work with. Jimmy Garoppolo was hurt for the whole year. He's going to absolutely go nuts this year, George Kittle. Uh, but if Tyreek Hill falls all the way into the late third round, you obviously have to take him here. And I'm hoping since I'm the eighth pick, you know, I get another pick in three picks. So hopefully either Ertz or Kittle stays on the board for me. Uh, well, that's what we call a monster L, people. We have Kittle go off the board, Zach Ertz go off the board, Breeze, Aaron Jones. I haven't even thought about a quarterback yet, which is probably not the best strategy right now, considering we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven off the board already. And uh, this is pretty standard. I would say, for the most part, they're usually a little bit further back than this. Um, quarterbacks, in what I've seen, like realistic super flex drafts, they go a little bit later. Um, but yeah, if, if you haven't done a super flex league, yeah, quarterbacks are super valuable. They go this early for the most part. I'm actually going to have an interesting keeper decision next year because I can keep Carrion Johnson for a ninth rounder, Aaron Jones, I think, for like a 12th, Robert Woods for a 13th, or Jameis Winston for a 10th. That's going to be really hard. I only get to keep one of them. Mm, man, that sucks, whatever. We're, we're not going to be able to pick that until way later into the summer when we know more about the backfields in Detroit and Green Bay and things like that. So as you can see, I mean, look how much value is still on the board for wide receivers, right? This is why I'm pretty much fading running backs at this point um, in the mid, middle rounds of the drafts. Because even if you look back at last year, it was the same thing, right? Those That third round, late second round into the third round, it was A.J. Green, Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, Mike Evans, um, all of those type of players were the third round picks that you wanted to take. But a lot of people ended up taking, you know, Alex Collins, J.H.I., Kenyon Drake. Uh, the mid round running backs just have historically busted very much. And there's no reason to, you know, take a chance on a, a risky guy like Leonard Fournette, who's probably going to end up getting hurt. Uh, Marlon Mack, who knows if they're going to draft or sign someone else through free agency. Chris Carson will have Roy, um, Rashad Penny competing for the job. You know, there's just a lot of risk around the running backs that are in this spot. I will say Damien Williams is the easy pick here because he is set up to be the workhorse there in Kansas City, depending on what they do through the draft. But I'm not going to take him just because this is that's super unrealistic at this point. I think if things hold, if they don't draft a, a running back in the top three rounds or if they don't grab someone through free agency, Damien Williams is going to end up creeping into probably the mid to second round. So I'm not going to pretend like I can take him in the fourth round because it's just stupid. Uh, at this point, Mike Evans would be my pick here. Getting Mike Evans as a wide receiver three or, you know, your first flex spot after Adams Hill is just like this team that I just started out with is out of control, actually, if you look at it. So I got lucky there because only two quarterbacks went off the board after I took Mike Evans. So now is probably when I would look to grab a quarterback for the first time, or maybe take one of these other skill players. Like I would, I would look at the running back position here. Like I would love carry on in the fifth round. Uh, I like Derrick Henry in the fifth round. I don't like Derrick Henry. Don't get it twisted. I dislike Derrick Henry heavily, but in the fifth round, just seeing how the year ended, you'd have to think that coaching staff is going to use him exactly the same way because they saw so much success with him, you know, down the line. So I might grab uh, a Derrick Henry and then see which of those top three quarterbacks right there fall to me in the next round. So I'll grab Henry as my two. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Um, Goff, Mayfield, Rivers 
would be you know my top three guys to look at. I actually like Dak in that area as well, even though he's ranked really low. Could care less about the rankings that they have on this board. Um, there's also some good tight ends left too. But again, if I'm not grabbing one of those top three talented guys, I kind of think Howard, Henry, Ebron, and Joku are all in a tier by themselves. And I'll take whoever is last of those guys that drops to me. Quarterback, my quarterback rankings video is going to be dropping on Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. I'll get way more into detail in terms of those guys. But quick breakdown, Goff, Mayfield, Rivers, my favorite talent by far and away out of these guys is Mayfield. However, if they don't add weapons to that offense, I'm a little nervous. They, they brought in Munkin, right? And they have Freddie Kitchens running the offense there from the coaching staff. I love everything about it. But when Jarvis Landry is your best wide receiver and the next guy up is either Antonio Callaway or Rashard Higgins, the quarterback is not going to be able to perform at a, a high level. So hopefully they use a draft pick on a, a playmaker, you know, in one of the first two rounds. Um, that would make me like Baker Mayfield a lot more. Otherwise, you know, he doesn't have the ceiling that some of these other guys have. Um, Jared Goff, now he finished the season terribly. I understand that. But listen, um, depending on what happens with the offensive line, if Whitworth does not retire and they re-sign Roger Saffold, I'm going to be very high on Goff. I know he didn't finish strong, like I just said. But when Cooper Cup was in the lineup, Jared Goff was a different quarterback. And obviously, Cup will be healthy to start 2019 with Cup, Woods, and Brandon Cooks running you know, running uh, on the outside again, like I, I will gladly take Goff as the, let me see how many quarterbacks are off the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So he'll be the 11th quarterback off the board. And I'm absolutely fine with that. He, the other thing about picking a guy like Jared Goff is if you're in a super flex, right. And you take three quarterbacks, or if you're in a one quarterback league and you take two quarterbacks or you're streaming, Jared Goff is a great player for this because his splits are so drastic. He performs way better at home than he does on the road, right? Anytime he was on the road, like especially like cold weather, Chicago, horrible game. At home in LA, monster games. So that's easy to see or to know which games to stream Goff. And that's, you know, while it might seem bad, you're like, oh, you don't want the, the home and away splits. He's good for that reason. If you are a streamer, Goff is like a good pick because you know which games to play him. So Mayfield is eh. Uh, Phillip Rivers. My take on Philip Rivers, I actually love Philip Rivers next year. He's going to be undervalued again, and I know he doesn't have that ceiling. He never has that ceiling. He doesn't have the league winning upside, but his floor is going to be ridiculously high next year once he gets Hunter Henry back. Um, so we'll have Hunter Henry. With Tyrell Williams gone, Mike Williams will step into in every down roll, which I think will help him not only in the red zone, but all over the field. We saw Mike Williams have some pretty dominant flashes last year at times, um, especially down the stretch. So Keenan Allen... Mike Williams, you know, two great pass catching running backs in Gordon and Eckler. Good offensive line that was much improved this year. Hunter Henry back will finally have that tight end position, which he loved with Antonio Gates. So I think Phillip Rivers is a great pick here as well. I think he's going to be someone who is a great late round quarterback who I think will put up similar numbers to like Matt Ryan next year. So I like Rivers. And again, it, it does depend on your league scoring. Like if you do a super flex with six point passing touchdown, that knocks down a guy like Lamar Jackson. But if you're in a four point passing touchdown league, Lamar Jackson, of course, or Mr. Bisky has a lot more value. But if you could see, you know, I'm comfortable starting guys like, you know, you can even take Josh Allen like in the in the ninth round or something. I actually I actually love Dak Prescott um, this year in super flex leagues as your quarterback too. He's someone that you could probably draft at like quarterback 15 or 17. And if you look at his splits over the second half of the year, he was a top eight quarterback once Amari Cooper got there. So I actually might wait another pick, grab another. See, this is what you got to ask yourself. You know, when you're about to say like, oh, I want to take Jared Goff here. What's the real difference between Jared Goff and, you know, Dak Prescott when you could have maybe Julian Edelman as your flex two spot or, you know, that cements OJ Howard as your tight end. So what I'm going to do here is take, I kind of wish I faded Derrick Henry there, took Julian Edelman and then could take a tight end here and then get carry on Johnson or something. Um, do I want Julian Edelman? Do I want... I love OJ Howard so much. I love him. Uh, I'm going to own a lot of Howard. I'm going to own a lot of Henry. I know for sure I'm going to be having these top five um, tight ends. Like I'm going to own a lot of Kittle. Probably not Kelsey only because you're probably going to have to draft him really early. And I think Kittle is going to give a very similar production around later. So I'm going to own a lot of Kittle this year. Um, I love OJ Howard. I love Hunter Henry too. So Njoku I like too, because if they don't add someone for Baker, Njoku's going to 
and see a huge target percentage. So maybe I'll hold off. Maybe I'll grab Edelman in that flex role because he's so consistent, just so dominant. And if Gronk retires, obviously that's a lot of targets up for grabs in that offense. Um, okay, so OJ Howard, no one drafted a, a tight end there. Love that. Um, okay, so quarterbacks went off. We saw one, two, three, four, five. So basically the five quarterbacks I would have thought about went off the board. So now I'm kind of in a pickle here. And um, I would probably go with back-to-back quarterbacks here to ensure that I have at least two solid starting quarterbacks in this position. Um, I don't like Brady. He really was shitty this year. I don't like Lamar Jackson right now. I just don't have confidence that Lamar Jackson holds up for the entire year. I know obviously they're going to switch things up and they're going to start making it a little more pass oriented in Baltimore than they did last year. They're still going to play the strengths, of course, but literally Lamar Jackson set the NFL record in rushing attempts in like a six game span. I mean, like he only played six games, but he set the NFL record for quarterback rushing attempts in a single season. That can't hold up. Um, They're going to try to move that more towards a a passing offense, of course, because he won't stay healthy. So he makes me a little nervous. Tom Brady just fell off. Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't love, but, you know, he should be good in that Shanahan offense. And grabbing him as, like, quarterback 17, I love that. Pairing him with Dak Prescott. So we'll go Jimmy here. You can still get, like, Kirk Cousins. I know I'm not going to love him because he's going to be running the ball a lot. Um, But they still have great weapons there. And when I think about the mid-round quarterbacks... All of them, you know, outside of really elite quarterbacks, outside of the Aaron Rodgerses and the Patrick Mahomes, and Patrick Mahomes might even be in that because we don't know what he would be like outside of Kansas City's offense. But outside of the very elite and the very bad quarterbacks, you know, your fantasy quarterback is pretty much going to be as good as the weapons around him. So uh, a guy like Kirk Cousins gives you a pretty good floor just because he has Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, hopefully a healthy Dalvin Cook next year. So uh, I like him. But, you know, just just to get this goddamn thing moving, I'm going to go with Jimmy G. And the quarterback stayed on the board. Cool. So I'll probably grab Dak as my QB2. And I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about that. They don't have, you know, monster weeks in them, I think. Dak has some pretty good upside. And I think Jimmy G could probably have some good upside in this offense, too. So we saw uh, Tyler Boyd. That was Tyler Boyd is going to be one of my most owned wide receivers. If you can get him in the eighth round or later, he's someone I want to take every single fucking draft. He's going to be... I can't really put him on my breakout list this year because he broke out last year, but he will probably be on my undervalued must draft players if his ADP sits around the eighth round because he will be super undervalued as AJ Green is going to be picked in the second and third round again. People will be like, ah, you know, he's not going to perform with AJ Green there. We saw him have monster games of Green. Boyd is a very good player in his own right. And they don't have anything else in that offense. John Ross is not the guy that they wanted him to be. They don't have a tight end anymore. Eifert is out of there. Boyd is going to command 20% of the targets in that offense, even if A.J. Green gets 27% of the uh, targets. So Tyler Boyd is a a great, great, great option as a later flex play for you. Um, I don't love any of the wide receivers right now. So I think the best value on the board as I'm looking at it is at tight end. Hunter Henry, David Njoku. Um, Hunter Henry's obviously a little bit risky coming off that injury, but now he's going to have a, a long, long, long time to have recovered because it happened in the off season and he was already back at practice and, and playing, um, playing down. The, yeah, he actually played down the stretch. So he's fully healthy, obviously, and he will be going into next year as their tight end one. He was someone who measures as an athletic freak. So we'll go over to player profile just to kind of give you, um, some of his, his metrics and, you know, how explosive he is. This is a great resource for anyone um, you know, doing your own research, playerprofiler.com is, is a fantastic. Christos. Mm, breakout age of 97th percentile, college dominator rating of 70, 62nd percentile, um, speed score in the 68th percentile. So he's actually not as explosive as I thought he would be, but he is, um, He's someone who should step into that role that Philip Rivers just loves throwing to the tight ends, and he'll be a uh, an instant red zone target, 6'5", 250. Um, love Hunter Henry in the later round, especially like ninth round right now. You shitting me? Like David Njoku here too, but... Um, yes, yeah, so we'll go Henry. Now, these are the rounds where, since I didn't go running back heavy up, up top, these are the rounds where I'm going to smash running backs. Smash Rashad Penny, smash Royce Freemans, smash guys like that who are in ambiguous backfields, right? 
Um, Rashad Penny, you know, Chris Carson is the guy there, but they used the first round pick on Rashad Penny and they tried multiple times to get him involved. He got a little bit banged up and then, you know, the injuries were lingering towards the end of the year. But when Rashad Penny was on the field, he still looked good. And it wouldn't surprise me to see that turn into a 50, 50 split, um, throughout the summer or, you know, him eventually winning that job. I love Chris Carson. Y'all know, I love Chris Carson, but that coaching staff is going to try to get Rashad Penny heavily involved. And when you look at running back by committees, this is why so many of the the mid-round running backs bust on a year-over-year basis because a lot of the guys who are drafted in the third, fourth, fifth round, right, all the workhorses go off in the first and second round because there aren't that many. Once you get to the third, fourth, fifth round, all those guys are risky because they usually have competition. The best thing to do with running backs are grabbing the later drafted player in those running back by committees um, in ambiguous backfields. I love Royce Freeman. I think Royce Freeman is going to be one of my more owned running backs this year. The reason is they have a brand new coaching staff. So Philip Lindsay was great. I love Philip Lindsay. I owned him in multiple spots. Awesome player. I don't think he's going anywhere, but they have a new coaching staff, which means that they're probably going to try to get Roy. They have no, you know, loyalty to Philip Lindsay. They, I mean, they saw him play obviously last year, but they weren't around him. They didn't watch him during practice. They don't know exactly what they have in him. So I also think they're going to get Royce Freeman involved. Royce Freeman was a guy who went on the field, just like Rashad Penny was very good in his own right. So he's going to be, you know, the RB two in terms of both on the field and in draft position, who I could see overtaking that starting role later. So these are guys in the 10th round that have tons and tons and tons of upside. Philip Lindsay is also dealing with a very long recovery from the uh, surgery he just went through. And there was reports coming out that I'm going to look at the, the last report that we just got out of Lindsay that didn't, didn't sound good, but sounded good. If you are a, uh, if you are a Royce Freeman owner, I actually just traded for Royce Freeman in a dynasty league, which was huge because I needed running back help. Philip Lindsay said he's going with the flow of things leading up to organized team activities. Won't discuss OTAs. So if he's not back by like the summer, that'll give Royce Freeman a chance to kind of eat into that starting role or eat into just like a, a heavier workload. Um, so we got our tight end. And yeah, and this is where I'm smashing these these later round upside uh, running backs here. Who you're going to have to stash because they might not start out the year, but eventually they'll probably work into a bigger role. Kenneth Dixon is another guy just like that. Um, who's going to be, you know, drafted as the second running back out of this backfield, most likely, maybe Gus Edwards, we'll see. I'll take, you know, in these types of backfields, I'll take whoever goes last off the board. Except for Ronald Jones, don't fucking take Ronald Jones, he's, he's so bad. Um, so, yeah, running back just got real thin, real quick. The other thing I would say is... Um, there's still a lot of like pretty good value at the wide receiver position. A lot of like breakout candidates. Anthony Miller, breakout candidate for sure. D.D. Westbrook put up a good year in his own right, so just a good player. Michael Gallup definitely has a little bit of a breakout appeal. I don't. I think I think he's going to be someone on people's like sleeper and breakout list a lot this summer, and I'm not really sold on him. Um, he didn't really do shit this year. He had a couple big games and flash, but you know any wide receiver is going to look athletic at times. If you're in the NFL, you're an athletic freak. And you're going to be able to make good plays. But like if you're not able to do that consistently, I have very, very little faith. Um, mm. So now is when I would look and be like, maybe I wish I had taken a running back over um, Julian Edelman. Whoever was, I forget who which running backs were left. Maybe like a carry on Johnson over Julian Edelman if he was there at that point. Um, because you have great plays at wide receiver, but you don't really have depth at running back, which is fine, I guess. If you're in like a 10 or 8 team league, depth is not necessarily your most important thing. You want to have a great starting lineup. So, if we're looking here. Yeah, we'll smash that Kenneth Dixon pick. He's another guy who, whenever he's on the field, he's great. Oh, I like Jalen Samuels a lot. Jalen Samuels is, I think, going to be a very high-owned player for me. And I think I went in on Jalen Samuels when I talked about James Conner in the running back rankings video. But Jalen Samuels, they bring in the NC State running back's tight end coach for when Jalen Samuels was playing at NC State. Racked up over 200 career receptions there. They're going to use Jalen Samuels heavily. If Antonio Brown is gone, a lot of targets up for, up, up for grabs. I don't know if they want to use James Conner in a workhorse role. You saw when he got back in Week 17 last year, Jalen Samuels out-targeted him 8-3 to in that last game. 
Um, so he was being used out of the backfield heavily. And I think Jalen Samuels is going to eat into James's Connor. James Connors is receiving workload. And that's what makes a running back very valuable in that Pittsburgh offense, right? It's, it's the receiving ability. So I like Jalen Samuels a lot. And he proved that even when James Connor was out, if something were to happen, James Connors missed multiple weeks now in both of his NFL seasons. Um, so I'm not calling him injury prone, but if he does miss weeks and Jalen Samuels is a plug and play RB one or tight end one, depending on if they let you use them, they're still in Yahoo doubt they will this year, but um, big fan of Kenneth Dixon. A couple other names on here. TJ Yeldon is a guy I feel like I'm probably going to own pretty heavily depending on where he goes because he's a free agent. I think a lot of teams could definitely use him. Um, and if used correctly, I think he'll have a lot of value at these later rounds in drafts. <laughs> Damn. So at this point, you know, depending on what happens, depending on if Jack Doyle comes back, I kind of like Eric Ebron here because, listen, I know tight ends get a bad rap. Like, you don't want to have two tight ends. But last year proved that tight ends could be used in the flex. A lot of tight ends put up numbers that were similar to wide receiver twos or even wide receiver ones, right? Like, Kittle putting up 1,300 yards is just as good as a top 10 wide receiver numbers. Zach Ertz catching 116 passes is just as good as, like, a top wide receiver in PPR. So although they have that stigma of just having the tight end next to their name, a lot of them are producing like actual fantasy wide receivers like you're able to pick George Kittle what kind of wide receiver do you get to pick in the third in the third round that you know puts up 1300 yards and is like a big red zone threat like yeah T.Y. Hilton puts that number up but he's not a red zone threat George Kittle is both a red zone threat and can put those numbers up so I, I think like people need to realize that tight ends are great values and if Eric Ebron is there as the only real pass catching tight end in Indianapolis he'll end up being obviously in real drafts like a uh, probably a third or fourth round pick but all the way down here, I kind of like him as uh, as an option in the flex. And I want to plug this in. One of the sponsors for today's video is Draft.com. Uh, if you guys are looking to mock draft, I know you're probably going to be itching to do this. I would say, you know, while you could do the Draft Pro, the Draft Wizard, whatever, Fantasy Pros for free, they're not as accurate, of course. The ADPs are going to be pretty bad and pretty skewed. Uh, on Draft.com... Since every league is, um, since every league is actually a paid league, but you can buy into a uh, a draft for as little as a dollar, you should um, you should mock on here because the ADPs and the actual drafts are way more realistic. So if you go to draft.com slash bdge boom, and then go to join now, if you are a new Thing. It'll already have the promo code as BDGE in there if you go to draft.com slash BDGE. That'll get you an entry into a uh, $3 draft um, with a deposit of 10 bucks. So I'm sorry if I came off spammy and just seemed like it was going to give you a free $3. But if you do it that way and you deposit $10, which is good, $10 will give you 10 mock drafts. You do one mock draft for a week, you're set up until like May, right? That's like two months of mock drafts. So for t just $10. Um, sign up, use promo code BGE, and then once you are signed up, let me uh, sign into my actual ting, um, you can do a huge variety of best ball leagues, right? You can go into fast leagues, fast drafting leagues where it's 30 second per pick or slow drafts if you don't have a lot of time, eight hours in between picks. You can enter anywhere from a dollar, like I said, you could do it with 10 bucks plus the $3 that you'll get for using my promo code. That's 13, right? That's three months of mock drafts that you can get like very good uh, instinctual knowledge of where to draft players. So anywhere from $1, $3, $5, $10, I've, they open up drafts up to like 1000 or $2,000. Anywhere from three person leagues up to 12 person leagues, um, and it's really fun just messing around and doing different drafts. But since everyone is paying money, obviously, they're going to take it a lot more seriously. And you'll get very realistic ADPs from there. So check out draft.com slash BDGE. Use that promo code BDGE and you will get uh, three extra dollars for a $3 draft. And I don't want to call it mock draft because you actually, you know, you draft these guys and you don't have to set your rosters throughout the year. And then when you come back, you just look at the results of the teams that you drafted last year. And you collect your money at the end of the season. Alrighty, 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 alrighty. Um, at this point in the draft, I'm really actually intrigued by the Arizona situation. I think Fitz and Fitz and Kirk, Christian Kirk is a guy I want to own, but if Fitz is going, you know, like seven rounds later, which I think he did in this draft pretty much. Let me see where Christian Kirk went. 
No, never mind. I totally lied. Well, Christian Kirk went in the 11th round, and I'm in the 13th round, end of the 13th round. So almost two and a half rounds later, I would take whoever's cheaper out of those two. I know Larry Fitz had a bad year by most accounts, or pretty much by all accounts on his thing. Um, He still had some good games, and almost everyone in that Cardinals offense, you kind of have to just be like, listen, that is just a wash of a year. Um. So with Fitz, I'm I'm fine giving him another chance in this Cliff Kingsbury offense. You know, hopefully with just a huge improvement coming this year. Um, I think Fitz is someone who could quietly give you 65 to 70 catches, 800 to 900 yards, and six to seven touchdowns. And he's someone that you're going to be able to draft in like the 13th to 14th round because everyone's like, oh, he completely fell off. But you have to remember that he was in that Arizona offense. So. Kind of like uh, fits down here, but honestly, if I'm in a three quarter, or I'm in a super flex league, I would definitely grab Kirk Cousins if he's still on the board here, which he is. So, I'm also kind of a fan of Matt Stafford this year. Everyone's going to be very, very, very down on him. But you also have to remember, and I know how bad that offense was, but you also have to remember going into this year, they're going to have a good line. They had a pretty good line going into last year, and that was one of the key points that people got excited about. Um, so their, their line is going to be underrated going into this year. So you always like a quarterback behind a good offensive line. Um, Kenny Galladay cemented himself as the QB1, uh, the wide receiver one. And they dealt with injuries at the wide receiver position all year, right? He missed Marvin Jones. And Marvin Jones is not necessarily a great wide receiver one in an offense. He's a great complimentary wide receiver. And now he's going to be able to fill that role outside of Kenny Galladay. So Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones running on the outside is great for Marvin Jones because... Um, he won't see, you know, the deep threat coverage that he normally would see with just a Golden Tate over the middle. They're also going to finally probably use Carrion Johnson as the workhorse here in Detroit. So you'll have a lot of things clicking right for uh, for Matt Stafford in 2019. And he's obviously someone that you can get ridiculously late as like quarterback 20 or 25. So I think he's a great quarterback three in super flex leagues this year because people are going to undervalue um, or completely like write him off for this year. So I like the idea of Kenny G operating as the one, Marvin Jones having a lot less pressure on his plate, operating as a wide receiver two in the offense. They will have to do something um, in the slot and hopefully fill the role with Tate, but I think a lot of those, Tate's not replaceable. Tate's actually an elite level slot receiver, but I think putting someone who is, you know, just mediocre or a little bit above average in the slot is someone that could do a lot of damage. So we're definitely hurting at running back here. Um, I, I might just kind of fade running back for the rest of the draft and then just try to pick them up off the waiver wire. Because the thing about drafting handcuff running backs, if you draft handcuff running backs, don't do that if you're in like a 10, 12 team league, 16 rounds of a draft. Because any like guy, like say, I don't know who's on here, Deonta Foreman or Doug Martin or whatever, any of these guys, Jamal Williams, they're all going to end up at the waiver wire. They're not going to be guys that you could play in the first two, three, four weeks. They're going to be dropped. So rather than using a draft pick on them, just fucking... Um, just don't draft them and you can get them off the wire three or four weeks. Just make sure you're like a week or two ahead of where if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to pick up a handcuff in week six, just get them in like week four or five so you know that in case an injury happens or something. Um, there's still a lot of high upside wide receivers that I like on the board. Antonio Callaway, I think he could definitely be the wide receiver one in that. If they don't take someone, then he's going to be the biggest outside threat probably for Baker Mayfield next year. Um, he flashed a bunch of times if he just works on his fucking focus and stops dropping the ball. I like him a lot. Um, if Deshaun Jackson is back with Tampa Bay, then I would definitely like him with Bruce Arians there and Jameis Winston. The Green Bay situation is one that heavily intrigues me because we don't know, right, completely new coaching staff. So that wide receiver two role is completely up for grabs. Randall Cobb is going to be gone. So you have Adams. Whoever is the wide receiver two with Aaron Rodgers is going to have a very, very, very big role um, there. We don't know who it's going to be. Is it going to be John O'Malley Allison? He can't stay healthy. He played in five games last year, 11 the year before that, seven the year before that. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, you know, flashed last year a little bit, but he was pretty much phased out of the offense. Like Rodgers, you could tell, just didn't want to throw him. There was like an eight-game period where he was getting like four targets a game, two targets a game. Um, and Rodgers, like clearly, in my opinion, kind of just didn't trust him. So I don't love Marquez Valdez-Scantling, but I'm going to take one of them. It'll probably be John O'Malley Allison just because you can get all of them really, really late in drafts. But I also like Equinemia St. Brown. Um, to emerge as the second wide receiver in that offense, or at least, you know, down the stretch maybe. So I kind of like Equinemia St. Brown. I like Albert Wilson a lot. He was someone who played really well until he got hurt. Uh, Traquan Smith, Zay Jones. James Washington is going to be someone people get really, really hyped on 
because if if Antonio Brown leaves, I know like people people get really hyped off like one fucking catch in preseason. It's actually fucking disgusting. But for looking at James Washington as an athlete, he profiles pretty well. 97th percentile breakout age, 62nd percentile college dominator rating. Those are things you look for, but he's not like a great athlete, I guess you could say. 40-yard dash, speed score is not great. Best comparable player to DeAndre Hopkins, though. So he's definitely someone to keep on your radar to fill in if Antonio Brown leaves. So there's a lot of high upside guys, in my opinion, at the end of these drafts. And uh, the running back position, I just don't think it's worth taking these guys here because they give you no value. And most of the time, there's someone that you can grab off the waiver wire. So I don't know. We'll go with uh, Antonio Callaway, sure. And I might, this might be a little bit crazy, and a lot of people might disagree with this, but I might even take a fourth quarterback here. <clears throat> and the reason being is because these are all going to be streamers, right? Dak, Jimmy, uh, Kirk Cousins. If you do end up taking, you know, a super flex guy early, if you get a Mahomes or you get a Luck or you get one of those guys, Rodgers, those are not streamers, right? You're going to have them in your lineup week in, week out, no questions about it. So you don't have to worry about streaming matchups too much. But if you have, you know, if you take two or three average quarterbacks that you're going to play the matchup in maybe drafting a fourth quarterback isn't the worst thing in the world right draft a, a Darnold maybe what if he has a breakout year and ends up as a top 12 quarterback then um, that was a great pick by you not saying I think that's going to happen but just saying you know um who else we got at wide receiver Traquan. Traquan, Traquan. there's a lot of actually decent okay value at the at later in the tight end position but I'm still gonna get my guy that I like. I actually absolutely love this team that I put together right now. Jimmy G, Melvin Gordon, Derrick Henry, Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, Hunter Henry, Mike Evans, Julian Edelman, Dak. That's a great starting lineup. Sorry, I'm having so much trouble. All right, we'll just fuck around and start picking players. We're almost done here. Uh, defense, I don't take until the last round because we nixed kickers in every one of my leagues. Thank God. Uh, defense, I will look at whoever has an easiest matchup in week one, whoever's the biggest favorite, whoever is the, um, you know, at home versus bad quarterback, big favorite, doesn't matter. Let's wrap up this mock draft. Why is the bench spot so big? Jimmy Jones, sure. Sure. I like what we saw from him in, uh, him and Josh Allen down the stretch last year. Not too shabby. And of course, rookies are going to end up getting into the mix here. There's a lot of good rookie wide receivers this year. Um, this is a relatively strong class for wide receivers, relatively weak class for um, running backs. Sorry, I'm just trying to get through this. I don't know when the last round is. Uh, okay. Well, we'll pretend this is done because I think I ap accidentally set it to like 30 rounds <laughs> by accident because you can see there's 10 bench spots. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. I hope this like analysis helps you out a little bit. And I'm going to be doing these just to kind of give you an idea each week as it goes by where players are shifting, what kind of moves I'm seeing in the ADP. So if you, uh, if you did, you know, like the analysis, if you value my input, then uh, a thumbs up on the video would be very, very much appreciated. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're going to be doing fantasy content all off season into the season. Help y'all win your chip. Sign up on draft.com if you want to mock draft with serious ADPs and really get an idea of where players are going. Draft.com slash BDGE. Use that promo code and you'll be Gucci players. I will see y'all. Um, ooh, your man's just going to, if you're watching this right now, I'm going, I'm apartment hunting right now in Brooklyn. So stay tuned for my next vlog and y'all will be able to see the apartments I'm looking at. I'm getting a call from Atlanta, Northeast Georgia. What's up? They want, oh, they want to sign me to the Falcons front office. I get it. I get it. All right. I'll see y'all uh, on Monday. Peace.